Hello, I'm back writing the Piano Movers game here, and this is our basic version that we ended in the last video. We have a score counter at the top. When we get pianos to actually get into the moving van, the score goes up. When we drop them, the score goes down. And this gets the basic interactions going in the game. In the next few videos, I want to work on the aesthetics of the game, getting it to look a bit more interesting using some of the special effects that come here with Unity. So let's get going on those pieces. The first thing I want is for the pianos to look like they're on fire when they're falling. And I'm going to use what's called a trail here in Unity. So let's open up our prefab, click on the prefab itself. Opening the prefab lets me start working with the prefab. Now there's a few ways that you could do this. And they're almost identical. Oh, I'll show you the different ways. You could say, I'm going to add a component. You could do it here. You could do it down here to add a component of an effect for a trail renderer. Now you can do that, and it adds this large, big component to your object. Let's watch what happens with that. If we go back to our scene, when pianos are created, they have a trail that follows them. And that trail is purple because purple is the unity color for you're missing something. Something should be here. There's a material, there's a texture, something's not there. And so I'm gonna show you this very strange purple color. So that's one way to do it. And we can go in and tweak things here, but the other way to do it, let's go ahead and get rid of that here. Trail renderer remove component. The other way that we commonly want to do it is to create another game object that is going to be an effect, a trail. So I can add a component, which is the trail renderer, or I can go through and add a game object, which is a trail, make that a child of the piano, and it has a trail renderer attached to it. This lets me do things with the trail that's a little bit different than the piano. If I want the trail to be following behind a little bit or be in front or uh, behind the piano itself, this object, which is a trail, is going to be here. And it comes a little bit more pre-built for us. It doesn't have the purple. They already put in a default material. <clears throat> and this is what's going on with our trail. Okay, so first, Let's give ourselves a trail and let's put it behind the piano. So we can see that we need to work with our Z coordinate. Let's put it back at Z of one. See what that does for us. Pushes it back a little bit into the background. Now the piano is always in front of the trail by changing the Z coordinate of the trail object. If it was a component, I could not do that because it was attached to the piano itself. Okay, second thing I want to do, I want to start changing the color. And the color of that trail, on the top you change alpha values, on the bottom you change color, and you can set up as many intermediate points as you want in here uh, to change your gradient. You can start off and say, well, these pianos are going to be on fire. We're going to have them be uh, yellow when they are close. And I'm going to move that down to, at the end, I'm going to turn it into an orange color. So let's make it be orange here. And in the middle, well, because I added this point, let's make that a nice bright red. So. Our fire is going to be yellow to red to orange, and we can change that gradient back and forth. And if we want to get rid of something that we clicked, we just get rid of it and drag it away. So even if you click on lots of them. So right here, I'm going to make the alpha transparency go down at the end. We can start to see it will fade from really bright to a medium fade. It'll still be there at the end. So let's see what that looks like. And we're starting to get our trails come down. Good, there's an alpha transparency. The color is changing throughout it. That's one thing we can tweak here. 
we can also tweak how long the trail is going to be following. Let's make it just follow for one second instead of five. And if we do that, we should see a one second trail that can follow after our object. Good. And let's start changing the width. And the width is interesting here because it says at the beginning, this is time zero to time one. I said it's one second. What is the width going to be? Here it's a constant width, but I can start changing it to say start off maybe at 0.5 and then pretty quickly I can make a point on here and start dragging it up to make it a little bigger at the beginning. And then near the end, I can start to drag it back down. So this will be the shape of my trail. And I can make it wider if I want. I can crank that up to two and everything is still relative to what's going on. This is really some splines happening underneath the, the, the hood here. You can tweak the individual pieces of how you want that spline to be reacting. So I'm gonna have it be looking like this. Now let's see what happens to my trails. Does it look a little bit more like fire coming off of those pianos in the background? Yes, this is gonna be my flames falling off of those pianos as they move. You can tweak this a lot, but that's enough for us to get started seeing how the trail renderers work. Okay, next video, I will get a particle system up and running.